Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first installment of our Flipped Classroom this year. I want to take a moment right away to describe my expectations to you so that you know what you're doing as you're watching these videos. Basically, I want you to watch these videos and take notes and treat them as if you were in class. So you should have a notebook out, your note guide out, ready to take notes as usual as you would in class. The good thing about video, though, however, is that you can pause it or fast forward it at any time. So if you feel the need to do that, uh, either to pause and work out a problem or to just take down additional notes, if I move too fast, feel free to do that. That's the advantage here. You are required to view this video before you enter the classroom on the day that it is scheduled to be taught. And what we'll do in class is that we, we will do the homework assignment that I'll give you at the end of this video in class. We'll use our time in class to do the homework assignment that you would normally do outside of class. That means that you need to watch this video before you show up. And that means that I have to make sure that you watch this video before you show up. So you actually do have a very, very short assignment on my website. And that is to go to the website and fill out this short response form. You'll notice that it's very easy. There is a spot for your name, which you should be able to handle. And then I'm going to give you a super secret code somewhere during this video that you have to select properly. And then you have to answer one question about the content of today's lesson. And that's what you have to do at the end of this video. You will be graded on this in a formative way. Very small points, but nonetheless in the grade book and you'll get a grade for it. All right, let's start chapter six. Like all good chapters, chapter six starts off with a couple definitions. In this case, on the top of your note guide, you should find a spot for ratio and proportion. A ratio in this book is defined to be two numbers that are one is being divided by the other or in colon notation where it is a to b or a to b you say it both the same way the only stipulation here is that b cannot be zero and when it is written a to b a is on top or a comes first slight misconception is that a proportion is a fraction while well, a proportion is actually two ratios that are set equal to each other. It is an equation. So this book defines a proportion as any two fractions that are set equal to each other with an equal sign. Um, one thing I didn't know before doing this lesson was that the relative positions of those things in those fractions have special names called the means and extremes. Uh, these names come from something that I'm going to talk about in the 6.1b video because we're going to talk about the geometric mean but you do sort of need to know or at least be aware of the fact that the diagonals are named in this way so the lower left and upper right hand corner of these fractions are called the mean and the upper left and lower right are called the extremes we're doing stuff with proportions and scale and ratios. So I thought I'd bring up something that's very commonly talked about in actual life in terms of ratios and proportions. And that is the size of TV screens or any sort of media device screen. And you probably notice when you're looking at the stats of a new electronic device that they list the screen resolution. And if you're looking at say a DVD player or even a DVD in a store it might list something like this dvd is produced in 720p or 1080p or 1080i or something like that and that's what these are these all of these ratios here are the ratio of the width of the screen versus the height of the screen in the number of pixels across and the number of pixels tall so obviously the more pixels the more resolute the picture or the sharper the picture so you can see we have these 1080p's that's currently that's widescreen high definition 1080p 1920 by 1080 that's widescreen and it's HD now there's some newish uh, 
displays coming out that are ultra high definition with many, 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 many more pixels than we've ever seen before. Um, and that should be exciting as they get going. Uh, just to give you an idea of how complicated it is, this is a graph of all the different standards that different devices use in terms of how many pixels across and how many pixels tall. Now you might notice that they're color coded all of these ones in red are a standard normal TV screen that is a four by three ratio, and that is normal, not widescreen mode. Um, the other very common one is in the blue. And if you take all of these numbers, like 1920 divided by 1080, you'll get a 16 to nine ratio. So uh, that is called a 16 to nine ratio. That's your widescreen. Uh, so 16 to nine, is your widescreen and the four to three ratio is your regular. But the, you can see that there's many different sizes of displays that manufacturers use on a variety of different devices. Very cool. All right, let's go back to math. Uh, straight up math, this time it's just simplifying ratios. And to do this, we're gonna treat them as fractions and then write them in whichever form we want. So uh, the first one, I would take something in colon notation, make a fraction out of it. The unique thing here that you need to recognize though is not only do the numbers simplify, but so do the units. So when I simplify this fraction, not only am I going to divide, not only am I going to simplify the 64 and the six, but also notice the meters cancel out. And my final answer would be 32 over three, or I can write that in colon notation again. Now in problem B over here, I have feet on top and inches on bottom, and is that a problem? Absolutely. You have to compare apples to apples. You can't compare pixels to inches you or feet to inches or whatever. They need to be in the same units. So you need to fix that. And if you've had a little bit of science this year, you've already done dimensional analysis like this, where you take a conversion factor and multiply it by your original fraction in such a way that the units cancel out. So if you follow this through, the inches cancel and the feet cancel. Multiply straight across top and bottom, so you get 60 over 20, and then simplify that. Now 60 divided by 20 is 3, and that's a fine answer, except the number 3 is not a ratio. So we want to give our answer in ratio form, which means that we are going to keep the number one on the denominator. Now you will be expected to do a number of unit conversions, and there are some very popular ones right here. The ones you definitely need to know would be inches to centimeters, one foot to inches, yards to feet or feet to yards, uh, how many feet are in a mile, uh, it's ounces in a pound for sure. This grams in a pound is handy, but you probably don't need to know it for this class. Obviously minutes in a hour and seconds in a minute. The one that this book tends to use that really doesn't come up all that often otherwise is quarts in a gallon and pints in a quart. So be aware of those conversion factors as you do your homework today. If you need to pause the screen right now and write down a couple of those, that might be helpful. Okay, here's our first example problem. And I might turn you loose on this. Uh, I'll just say pause the screen and try to do it yourself and come back to it and see if you got it right. So pause and then play. Okay, if you're back, the first thing to do here would be to assign the ratio of this rectangle some variable so that we can talk about it. So if we have one side that's two, we're going to call that 2x. And if you have, if that's 2x, then the other side is 9x. From there, we can set up an equation that has to do with perimeter. We just add up all the sides. So two times one side plus two times the other side. So we get perimeter equals two times w plus two times h. Plug in our stuff. We have we know that the perimeter is 484, uh, two times nine X and two times two X. So simplify that, solve it. You'll get down to X equals 22. Now it ultimately asked for the area of the rectangle, which means that you need to figure out the actual dimensions of the rectangle. So 
Uh, for the width of the rectangle, take 9 times 22. For the height of the rectangle, takes 2 times 22. You get 198 and 44. And then to get your area, you just take width times height, and you'll get 8,712 feet squared. Second example, this time with a triangle and talking about the angles inside of a triangle. This is called an extended ratio where there's more than two things being compared. You can extend a ratio to be as many things as you want. Uh, but this time we have three angles, so we'll talk about a ratio using three items. Um, and again, as you might suspect, we're going to assign the values of x, 2x, and 3x to the angles of the triangle. Then we got that triangle angle sum theorem that says that all the angles of a triangle should add up to be 180, which means that we get a nice little equation like that. Combine like terms and solve, you get x equals 30. That hasn't yet answered the question, so if one of the angles is 30, then multiply that by 2 to get 60, and multiply that by 3 to get 90. So altogether you have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, which is totally not as that was drawn, but that's what geometry people like to do is trick you with drawings. The last major concept you need to know today is something that you've done in seventh grade, eighth grade, probably even sixth grade, and that is how to solve a proportion equation using the cross products method. The cross products property says that if you take the means of a proportion equation and the extremes of a proportion equation and multiply them together, you get the same thing. So that gives you one very important result. That is that if you multiply the means together and set them equal to the extremes, that you get an equation that no longer has any fractions in it and it's much more handy. So I'm going to do one example. The example that I'm going to do is as advanced as you'll see on your test. So this is one uh, proportion equation that we're going to do here. You'll notice that you have a sum and a difference on uh, half of your fractions there. So whenever you have something separated by addition on a cross products problem, immediately throw in a set of parentheses there just to remind you that that quantity has to be viewed as a chunk all by itself. Then cross products, multiply the diagonals and set them equal to each other. You'll get that. You'll notice in this one I have a binomial times a binomial, which means that you have to FOIL first terms, outer terms, inner terms, last terms. So basically it's double distributive property. Now if you're clever enough, you'll notice that that's actually a special case. You have z minus 2 and z plus 2. So you can either FOIL it like this, or you can immediately notice that the plus 2 and the minus 2z are going to cancel out, and you get that special case binomial situation where you have z squared minus 4 equals 32. So add 4 to both sides, take a square root. That'll give you two answers, and z equals plus or minus 6. Always a good idea to check your answer on these things as well. That's about as tough as it gets for today. Here is your homework assignment. Up at the top there, page 360, that I obviously don't want you to do right now. You'll be able to do it in class, and obviously I've got that written down in the calendar in class. However, you do need this super secret code, 8645. That is one of the answers to your exit quiz or your response form for 6.1a. So go back to my website, Kadera Math. You'll see another little section for it that says section 6.1a response form. Fill that out, send it to me, and I'll give you a grade on it, and we'll be done. I'll see you again at 6.1b. Have a great evening.